Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball Podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Tonight, we're going to be talking about medication, meditation, meditation, not medication. But I am joined <laughs> by author, poet, consultant, educator, and ordinary mystic, Blair A.B. Blair has written books and dozens of articles. He's an award-winning book writer, and he has written dozens of articles on meditation, manifestation, and similar topics. So Blair, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Um, well, as you meant, mentioned, um, I've, I've written five books, now six actually, and one more in the works um, on the subjects of meditation and mindfulness and manifestation. Um, uh, and I started doing that. And if you like, I can kind of give you uh, the backstory um, uh, about how I got into doing this. Um, would that be um, where you want to go? Or do you want me to keep this short and then more questions? Yeah, just um, uh, anywhere that that you want to uh, take it. I, I see in your bio also how you began. Yes. So why don't you start telling the audience okay. how you began? Well, let me tell you my story. I mean, this is, uh, I, I think, an interesting story and a, and a story really of overcoming and reinventing myself. And, and um, it, it really started with uh, a move uh, to San Diego about eight years ago uh, uh, to take a high level job. Uh, down there and it turned out my boss was pretty much a psychopath um, uh, abusing employees uh, um, misusing funds uh, and generally running our program into the ground but the people who were supposed to be watching and and monitoring her really weren't and she was a good smoke and mirrors kind of person uh, kept everybody in the dark um, but I could see what was going on and after almost a year um, I just couldn't deal with it anymore. I couldn't put up with it. I couldn't let people be abused. I couldn't let the program uh, go down the toilet. Um, and so I went to the people higher up and let them know what was going on. Well, an in investigation ensued. Uh, she was fired, but they also fired me as a whistleblower because they said I was a troublemaker. Um, now, fundamentally, what that meant was that they hadn't been paying attention and uh, I sort of exposed their uh, problems as well. Um, so that was the end of that 25 year career. Uh, and that was devastating. I mean, I was my job, my ego was out to here. Uh, I uh, um, uh, um, was just, uh, my, my, you know, I lost my income. I mean, the whole thing, just my whole, my whole world kind of collapsed. Um, and I um, started as therapy, a journaling, uh, um, writing down my thoughts and feelings. And I'd been doing meditation for about 45 years. So I took a deep dive into my meditation practice. And um, uh, interestingly enough, Curtis found myself um, making co soul contact, making contact with my higher self, with that part of myself that I really had never recognized. But as a result of doing a deep dive into my meditation practice, um, I began to realize that some of what I was writing was just kind of spirit pouring through me uh, onto the keyboard. And after about 100,000 words uh, of, uh, of that, I realized that I had something that was perhaps valuable to other people. And it was then that I began to um, write my books. I, I really had no intention of being an author. I'd never um, uh, really aspired to do that. Um, but now that I've done uh, 
um, like I said, five, six books, one more on the way. I've, I've distributed about 23,000 books in the last five, six years. Um, so they're, they, they, they seem to be uh, catching on with people. And uh, it, it's really a very satisfying thing to do. But I had to reinvent myself in the process. I really had to turn myself inside out. And I came to re- realize that really I, this was where I needed to go. Spirit knew that this was where I needed to go. Um, my, my, my human mind didn't know that. Um, but it's taken me in a direction that has been so incredibly satisfying uh, and was exactly where I needed to go. Uh, but I didn't know it at the time. That's my story. <laughs> Tell us about, about your kind of a hero's no. journey uh, story, you know? Absolutely. Tell us about your new improved uh, method of meditation. How and why does it work? Have you been a meditator in your um, uh, life as well? No, I'm not a meditator, but I'm okay. sure All some right. of my listeners are. Um, meditation in many of the traditions of meditation is about um is about mind training, uh, training the mind to be quiet. And the and the mind doesn't want to be, our, our human minds don't want to be quiet. Uh, our human minds want to kind of run things. Uh, and, uh, you know, it doesn't take but a minute to pause and reflect on the stream of thoughts that are constantly coming through. Um, and about the past and about the future and worried and and, and all of that sort of thing. Uh, and so traditional meditation is about training that mind when the mind doesn't really want to be trained. So what I ended up doing was developing a new form of meditation, which I called higher consciousness meditation. And higher consciousness meditation bypasses, if you will, um, the traditional way. Uh, and takes you straight to soul contact, t- takes you straight to um, uh, being quiet and experiencing illumination and experiencing spirit and having a, a, a really an enlivening um, experience uh, without without all of that uh, uh, struggle that that traditional uh, mind training uh, meditation. Uh, does um, so higher consciousness meditation is really it's kind of it's kind of like meditation 2.0 you say in your bio i read how you talk about that we are all internal beings what does that mean and, and how is that I- important or why is that important yes um I, i've come to realize that we that we are all I- eternal beings um, that um, have always existed and, and always will exist uh, into the future, um, that we are each a spark of God, if you will. I like to use the term the all as opposed to God because I like to use that as a way of getting past all the mm, different ideas that people have about God and just talking about the all as being um, omnipresence, if you will. Um, And that as eternal beings, what we've done is to come to earth to occupy, if you will, human bodies, these amazingly complex biomechanical vehicles that we occupy, to occupy these um, uh, uh, amazing bodies as spirits in bodies, but also to grow and to evolve beyond just being human beings, beyond just being hypnotized as human beings into thinking that we are limited, that we are uh, uh, small, that we're going to die someday when in fact what's going to happen is we're going to take a last breath here on planet earth and we're going to take our next breath in uh on the other side uh, you know whatever that happens to be but that that um uh, 
big place that we all know that we're going to evolve to uh, a- after uh, planet Earth. Um, and that if if people began to see that they're not only human beings in limited bodies with computer processors for brains, but instead could see themselves as eternal beings, as uh, sparks of the divine, um, that we would that we would all began to evolve more into uh, being uh, the the amazing beings that we are instead of staying limited in, uh, in in human consciousness. So higher consciousness instead of human consciousness. And I think this is one of the most important issues of our times, because if we don't recognize this, if we don't begin to evolve beyond our three-dimensional human selves, we're not going to make it. I mean, we we seem to be headed for disaster. Uh, and I'm 70 years old, so you know I'm not going to see the worst of it. But my children and my grandchildren may see really awful times unless we begin to wake up and see that what we're doing doesn't work, and that we are that we need to grow up, that we need to evolve and that we need to begin to see all of us as being important, and that if we all don't succeed, none of us are going to succeed in the next 50 years. So to me, that's an existential crisis, and understanding that we're eternal beings begins to address that in a way that gives us a chance to evolve quickly enough that we can survive. So talk about soul contact and how people can make soul contact and what does that mean? Yes. Well, as I mentioned when I was when I was doing my deep dive into my meditation practice, um, I began to get a sense of um, spirit uh, moving through me as I was writing um, that were coming out, were flowing out in a way that wasn't my normal way of talking, or it wasn't my normal way of writing. It was if, as it was as if there was a um, uh, a, a higher part of myself that was beginning to express itself. And the the further I went with that, the the more I began to sense this higher consciousness part of myself, which I call soul. I like to use the term. Uh, lovingly for my soul is higher consciousness or high C um, and that um, high C and I were kind of joining in a way to do the writing, but also to uh, just for, to, to raise me up in my awareness, to raise me up in my consciousness. It, it's it's um, talked about in in the, the Christian Bible as being the, the still small voice that is possible to um, experience. And I think we all have that. I think we all have souls. I think we all have a part of ourselves that is higher consciousness. But unless we do some meditation or some other spiritual practices, we never get in touch with that. Nobody in our lives from the time we are born, talks about this because nobody knows that the kingdom of heaven is inside of us, as all of our spiritual teachers have said. They've all said the same thing, that there's a spirit within us that, if we get to know it, um, is an illumined element of ourselves and is a higher version of ourselves, which we can grow with uh, into this um, uh, sense of higher consciousness that I'm talking about. So these days, that sense of of uh, soul contact is frequent. Um, I, I frequently find myself in dialogue, if you will, with that higher part of myself, 
whether it's when I'm writing or when I'm taking my dog for a run or when I'm just pausing for a moment throughout the day to do a little mindfulness exercise like peace be still, for example, um, which I say to myself frequently, that 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 part of me is just waiting for me to to be aware of it is it's just waiting for me to recognize it. And in fact, it's been waiting many lifetimes. Uh, I believe in reincarnation. It's been waiting many lifetimes for me to wake up enough to have that uh, develop that relationship with that soul part of me um, that I think, again, we all have. Um, and with a little bit of practice, we can all contact. I also think that, that that part of myself has my best interest at heart. And I can I can frequently kind of get a sense of it going out into my world and sort of smoothing the path. And if you can kind of think of spirit smoothing the path for you, having your best interest at heart, wanting you to grow and evolve, um, it's quite an experience to uh, have uh, soul contact and to, um, oh, uh, have that sense of illumination that comes with soul contact. So that that's really, uh, um, that's what I mean by soul contact. And, and I also use it, um, uh, that whole, that soul contact in the, in the uh, uh, manifestation or um, law of, attraction work that I do and that I write about in my book, The Manifestation Book. Talk about the benefits of meditation and why it works the way it does. Recently, let's say within the last 15, 20 years, but especially within the last 10 years, a lot of research has been done on the benefits of meditation. In fact, I, I wrote my first book was on the benefits of meditation. The benefits in, of meditation, according to uh, scientific uh, research, are are many. In, in that, uh, mental, uh, emotional, uh, and physical conditions respond to meditation very positively. So everything from stress and um, depression to uh, heart disease, disease and even um, uh, Alzheimer's disease responds to meditation positively. So it's been shown scientifically to have a really uh, amazing, if you will, therapeutic uh, value uh, for people who meditate. And I think one of the reasons that it works is that when you meditate in the way that I'm speaking of, you, you get quiet to the point where pers you know, personal conditions, whether emotional, uh, uh, physical, uh, or uh, uh, mental conditions uh, seem to start to dissipate in the light of spirit. They start to resolve themselves. The body has a natural tendency to return to a state of homostasis or fundamentally good condition uh, when it's not under a lot of stress. And uh, meditation uh, makes that makes it possible for the body to heal itself and for the body um, to receive the higher energy that comes with being in touch with soul, being in touch with spirit and having that move on your behalf, if you will. Well, why do you say sit down and mindfulness meditations can complement each other? The, Higher consciousness meditation that I mentioned earlier is a sit down meditation. It takes about five, 10. If you want to, you can go 20 minutes. And I do that morning and evening. 
Uh, and it's a really good way to start the day and to end the day and to get quiet and to get a sense of uh, myself as a as a spiritual being and to get a sense of uh, higher consciousness and illumination. Mindfulness, on the other hand, is, is a bit of a different type of meditation practice where you take 20 seconds, a minute, uh, a couple of minutes to, to get quiet. And there are different ways of doing that throughout the day. So I like to do mindfulness techniques or mindfulness practices throughout the day to supplement what I do in the morning and the evening and to remind myself over and over that I am an eternal being, that um, everything is okay, and to take a moment to quiet down. Um, mindfulness can also be used in business. Um, uh, before you go up to take the podium for a speech, doing a mindfulness practice, like saying to yourself, peace, be still, will calm you right down and make you much more effective when you get up and, and, and talk. Because many people are afraid uh, to get up in front of a, a group of people. But if you can learn to calm yourself down by using mindfulness practices and just getting into the moment, you know, the be here now idea, um, that can make your uh, ability to present yourself much more effective. Um, and also meditation has been shown at Google, for example, to help people be much more creative and much more able to contribute um, and, 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 and high performance uh, in meetings and in their day-to-day -day work. Um, so there's, there's those benefits that come from mindfulness if you can employ them throughout the day uh, in, in different situations, whether it's personal or business or whether, you know, just being in traffic and saying to yourself again, peace be still um, is a way to calm yourself down so that, uh, you know, you don't get all um, worked up about the fact that somebody just pulled over in front of you. Um, you don't get stressed out. Um, perhaps you can even forgive him for being careless in that moment uh, instead of, um, um, uh, you know, wanting to, to take him out and, and, and throw him, off, uh, you know, off the bridge someplace. Tell us about your books, uh, where we can get them and what listeners can expect if they read them. Yes. Uh, my books are all available at Amazon. So if you go to uh, Amazon, you can get a uh, uh, any one of the six books. Um, you can get them in paperback version or you can get them in uh, ebook versions. Um, and the, the, the meditation book, num number the uh, best book one, the benefits of meditation, book two, the meditation book, book three, the mindfulness book, book four is a, actually a book of poetry. Um, book five I'm reserving because um, it's coming out uh, in, in a few months on health and wellness. And then book, book six is on the, um, on the subject of uh, manifestation. So each one of them have, um, you know, address uh, significant issues that I think everybody can benefit from in the ways that we've uh, been talking about. And I, I would be happy to share my most popular book with your readers. Um, I have a um, link to give you. It's a subscribe page slash or forward slash one meditation book. And if people will go to that um, link, uh, they can get a free copy of the meditation book. Or they can go to my website, which is High C Meditation, which is H-I capital C meditation.com. Uh, and they can get a, a free copy of my uh, benefits of meditation and also a free meditation bracelet. 
Uh, so I wanted to offer your readers uh, an opportunity to get a couple of free books by either going to my website or by going to subscribe page forward slash uh, one, as in the uh, number one, uh, meditationbook.com, uh, and uh, they can get free books. Absolutely, listeners. So if you're into meditation or you know somebody that is, be sure to take advantage of that. Besides that new book, uh, tell us about any current or upcoming projects that you're working on that people need to know about. Yes. Well, the, the current project that I'm working on is uh, a book, as I said, on the subject of health and wellness. And it's going to be uh, a, a book that offers a lot of tools that people can use to improve their health and to get a much better sense of, 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 of their wellness and uh, to improve that aspect of their selves as well. So meditation is, is a great way to feel uh, healthy um, for the reasons that I mentioned earlier and to have a sense of wellness. Uh, but there are other tools that you can use. For example, there are a number of things that you can do in your home to up the vibration of the uh, of the house that you live in to have just a better surrounding there are uh, you know physical exercise there's tai chi that people can do for example there's um uh, yoga that people can do to feel both mentally and physically as well as emotionally better there are uh, uh really a, a lot of things that one can do in their lives to, again, just, just have a better life and a better lifestyle by being mindful about things that you do and by doing meditation and by being grateful and by forgiveness and by giving to people. Uh, the One of the interesting things about giving is that thing when you give it, it seems to come back to you you know you give and you receive so there are a number of things that can help to people to improve their both their health and their wellness and their sense of well-being uh their sense of safety their financial well-being there are a number of things that people can do to improve all of the in, in all of those areas of life and that's what uh the uh, health and wellness book will be about uh, and it, it's it's the next book after I, my, the uh, book that I did on manifestation uh, and attracting good people, circumstances, and things into your life. We'll close us out with some final thoughts. Anything that I forgot to touch on that you would like to talk about or just any final thoughts you have for the listeners? I, I, I think I'd like to come back to the, the fundamental notion that, you know, we are all eternal beings. And that we all have an opportunity in this lifetime to wake up, to be more aware, to be more loving, to be more compassionate, to be uh, more abundant in our lives. Um, these are all opportunities that I think come with becoming more awake and aware. Um, and using uh, meditation and other spiritual practices uh, as a way of growing and evolving and having a uh, uh, having a better life. So I invite everybody to to uh, uh, take the opportunity in whatever way they can to uh, delve into uh, a spiritual practice that will allow them to know and understand these things. And certainly if you hear anything that I've said today that strikes a chord, uh, explore uh, the uh, um, the books and, and, and other uh, works that I've put out there, uh, my YouTube channel, my Facebook page, you know, those sorts of things. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I see medication, meditation, there I go again. I see meditation.com. 
Blair AB, be sure to check him out. Go get the uh, free stuff that he's offering. Um, if you know somebody that send a meditation, follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible. Please be sure to tell a friend about the show. If you have any feedback, hit me up at cjackson102 at cox.net. Blair, thank you so much for joining me today. Curtis, thank you. This has been a great pleasure. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.